Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and on this episode, we're going to put a Raspberry Pi in a Commodore 64. So before we get started, let's talk about this project as a whole because it might be a little bit different than you expect. So what we're going to do is take the motherboard out of this Commodore 64 and set it aside. It's actually good and uh, we'll use it later for something else or someday put it back in the Commodore 64. We'll be replacing its motherboard with a Raspberry Pi. And so if you're not familiar with a Raspberry Pi, I have some videos on that. And there are several YouTubers that have some really great content on the Raspberry Pi. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, it's a single board computer that runs on the ARM architecture. And you can run uh, Windows IoT, Raspbian, which is a, a form of Linux, and some other stuff. And one of the really cool things that you can run on there is a piece of software called RetroPie. And RetroPie allows you to emulate all kinds of of old operating systems, one of them being the Commodore 64, but you can also emulate arcade systems um, such as the old Pac-Man and Galaga and those types, as well as old video game consoles like the Nintendo and others. And so we'll be putting that inside the Commodore 64 as its main uh, computer. The second device that we'll be putting inside the Commodore 64 is this device called Akira, and I believe that's how it's pronounced, so let me know in the description if I'm wrong, uh, but I think that's how it's pronounced. And the Akira is a neat little device. It is designed to match the port layout of the Commodore 64, though you can use this in the 128, the Amiga, and others. It's just not quite as elegant. Um, but the uh, Akira matches the ports. It gives you two joystick ports as well as a power button which will send an AC AHCI um, signal to the Raspberry Pi allowing you to turn it on and off remotely. Um, you just hold it down, it's a momentary switch, you hold it down, or sorry, I believe you hold it, yeah, hold it in the up position for uh, one or two seconds and it turns the device on or off. Um, the Kira has keyboard inputs for the Commodore 64, the Amigas, and others, as well as uh, places that you can solder on um, additional components for if you want to use like a Commodore 128D or something like that. In addition, it has outputs for LEDs and onboard uh, USB for internal and external USB. We'll come back to that in a second. So you can and we will have the external um, power LED on the Commodore 64 turn on and off when we turn the Raspberry Pi on and off. So it'll be just like it's the um, original computer like it's factory that, that'll be really cool um, the other thing you can use this Kira for if you don't want to do a Raspberry Pi and you want to just do something a little different you can grab this device I, I think it's about 35 or 40 bucks um, off the internet um, I had to order mine from Germany and um, but you can just install this in there with no other devices and plug this which is just the uh, external USB port which will be where the power port is currently on the Commodore 64 and it will allow you to use the Commodore 64 as just your keyboard for a regular PC or Raspberry Pi or some other console, anything basically that, that has USB keyboard support. And so you could just have a Commodore 64 keyboard for your PC using this. So that's pretty cool too. But we're going to use it together with the Raspberry Pi in our project and have a full working Raspberry Pi Commodore 64. Okay, so let's quickly illustrate how this is going to work. First, we're going to install the Kira into the C64 using the existing side plate. Then, we will install the Raspberry Pi Model 3 into the center of the C64 using the mounts we're going to 3D print. On top of the Raspberry Pi, we will install a power block. Now this is cool because it will allow us to turn the Raspberry Pi C64 off and on from a remote switch. Follow that up with a remote HDMI output, a remote power button, a remote micro USB for powering the whole unit, and then connecting the Kira to the Pi via USB. Finally, we'll attach the Commodore 64's keyboard to the Kira. So now that all the screws are removed, we just need to remove the motherboard and it just takes a little bit of pressure to pull it up and out of its place and set it aside. Now, my recommendation to you is whether or not your motherboard 
works um, flawlessly or whether it has problems or whether it's completely dead is to set it aside in a box and store it somewhere because they can be easily repaired and um, they're getting rarer every day. So I would recommend that you hold on to that. But one thing that you're going to need to do for sure is to remove this um, little side panel that covers the side ports because the Kira is going to mount inside that and uh, that'll keep it very clean looking and very uh, fresh looking when you put it back together. The Kira, you can't, well, let's see if you guys can see it there, but um, the Kira does not come with the internal soldered um, header on it for the USB. So the only way to plug USB in is to plug it into the outside. What we're going to do is solder on that internal connector so that we can run um, a cable from internal to internal so it's completely um, invisible. So a couple of things. So number one, I do not claim to be professional at soldering by any means. In fact, I'm amateur at best. So for those of you who know what I did wrong, feel free to uh, troll in the comments and that'll be okay with me. I need a good laugh. Um, the second thing is, um, or, or I guess this is really part of the first thing, is after you solder something like this, especially if you're an amateur, just get a regular old meter out, put it in continuity mode, and make sure that none of those pins are connected because they should all be independent. So the second thing is um, there could be some flux left over on the solder pads and that can make a connection um, electrically. So the best thing that you can do before you try to resolder or anything else is to just get a, um, a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol and wipe off all of the contacts that you just soldered in the, all of the area around it and then recheck. And that may take care of it right there. And you should really do that regardless anytime you solder. It's just to clean off that excess flux. Okay, so we're not going to cover 3D printing in this episode. There's a lot of YouTube resources on that already. Um, what I will do is quickly walk you through the items that I 3D printed, and these are freely available on Thingiverse. And so um, I'll have links for those in the description. But the first one is uh, the cover for the uh, user port and the tape port. And these will include the uh, mounting locations for our HDMI, our power port, sorry, our HDMI, our power port, and our um, USB charging port and that one will go here. The second item that we 3D printed covers the Commodore's IEC ports um, as well as the composite port and this will also serve as the mount for the Raspberry Pi. The last one is a 3D printed piece that covers the cartridge port as well as provides a little bit of cover for some of the ports that are on the side of the Kira and it will just go here. So before we assemble everything, um, we need to install these little knurled uh, hot set inserts. And basically the way that works is there's holes already 3D printed in all of the components. And we will use a soldering iron to heat these up and then they'll melt into the 3D printed plastic. And this is what will uh, hold in our Raspberry Pi and all of our cable components um, with uh, cap nuts on the backside. So let's go ahead and install those and then we'll put everything else together.
Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and installed uh, RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi. And for those of you who don't know, RetroPie is a um, operating system specifically built for the Raspberry Pi that allows you to emulate old operating systems, arcade games, and the like. And so I have a whole video on how to do that, so I'm not going to repeat it in this video, but I'll put a link in the description um, for those of you who would like to watch it. So all we have to do now is plug in the HDMI, the power cable, and a joystick, and we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and do that. So the cool thing about having a power block installed on a Raspberry Pi is that it allows you to have a remote switch that will turn on and off the Raspberry Pi. Now you might not know, but a Raspberry Pi has to be shut down before you turn off the power. But the power block actually sends the shutdown command to the Raspberry Pi and then monitors the GPIO pins to make sure that the Raspberry Pi is actually completely powered down before removing power. It's a great little accessory and I highly recommend it for anyone who's a Raspberry Pi enthusiast. But to go ahead and start, all we have to do is flip our remote switch and the Raspberry Pi will boot up. And this is, of course, where things get really cool. So now that we have RetroPie running, Commodore 64, we can scroll through the menu and we have all kinds of things. I've installed some Nint Nintendo ROMs, um, a Commodore 64 emulator, uh, MAME, which I've installed Pac-Man and some other arcade games. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and pick the Commodore 64, hit start. I've installed one game, Ultima 3. It's just the Ultima 3 D64 file. We'll click on that and RetroPie will go ahead and load the Commodore 64 emulator and automatically start the process of loading Ultima. So the cool thing is, once you're in the emulator, everything works on the Commodore 64 just like it's a real Commodore 64. The Kira maps the Commodore 64 into a standard US or European keyboard. And so we can play a little bit of Ultima, just like we could on the real C64. Uh-oh, we've been attacked. You can even boot into BASIC and write your own little programs. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I would do different if I redid this project. The first one is I would add an audio jack, and the reason why is um, I realized after I'd already finished the project that the monitor I'm using does not have HDMI audio or even speakers, so I had to kind of rig up some speakers here, and I made it work, but it's not ideal. Um, the second thing I would do is add a USB jack or maybe a couple of USB ports to the back of the computer as well. Um, the reason why is the Commodore 64's keyboard is actually missing a lot of keys that a standard 101 um, US or EU keyboard has. And so when I'm going into the con uh, configuration for RetroPie um, and trying to edit some of the text files, some of the keys that I need are really hard to use. Um, so I would, I would add that. Well, hey guys, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm about to hit 100,000 subscribers, so I would love it if some of you guys that are not subscribed would go ahead and hit that subscribe button and help push me over the top. Well, I'm going to play a little bit of Pac-Man, and I'll see you in the next video.